Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to create the Azure resources and set up our environment to be able to use Azure Dev Spaces. So I went ahead and um, I created the front end app and kind of just wrote this script, but I'm going to go through it. So first you log in. Um, actually, I'm, I'm just going to go. Uh, so you log in. I already logged in just because um, it takes time to log in. And here I just set up some variables so it can be reusable. And so then we're gonna create um, a resource group. If you already have one created in Azure, you can do that uh, in this location. Um, next, we're gonna create the Azure Container Registry. So this is where you're gonna keep your Docker images. Uh, it's kind of the same as Docker Hub, but it, it Azure created their own that it's closely integrated with Kubernetes ser uh, service that they offer. You can use the Docker one as well, but this one is just easier. And uh, if you're gonna lock down your image and you don't want it to be available, like it just saves you from having the passwords and everything, because as you can see here, I just tell it like, hey, give permission to this cluster and it'll automatically give it permission. It will be able to pull the images. So I just decided to use it. It's $3 a month for the basic one. So um, I, I just decided to use it. Um, so then we're going to create the cluster. Um, we pass the node count, so how many nodes we want to start with, the version, uh, what container registry we want to attach it to. Uh, I made it that you can auto scale it. So it auto scales depending on your uh, traffic. Give it a max max number of nodes because I, I don't want to spend as much money as possible. Um, and then location, this is the location where I want to do it. And then I just rerun it because sometimes it was failing. So I just, it takes an extra two seconds to deploy. So I decided to do it. And then for some cases, you if it's a development one, you want to use Azure Dev Spaces, which is a really cool thing that basically lets you um, run, the, run your code in Azure and connect to other microservices. If you only have one microservice, it kind of doesn't make sense because you're not testing any implementations or anything. But if you have multiple microservices and you don't want to run all the all, the, all of them in your computer, or like you might you might not have a powerful enough computer than using Azure for this. It's easier and you can have many different developers using it at the same same time. It's a pretty cool feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And while it runs, I'm going to go and talk about the extensions that I added. So I added the Azure account one. That's so you can log in and the Azure uh, CLI tools. This one, when I started doing uh, Kubernetes, it, re it recommends it. So you, but it's the Dev Spaces, which I just talked about, and also the Kubernetes service that I just talked about. Docker. This one is for managing my Docker images. I just like having it. Same with Kubernetes. And I, I think actually this one gets auto installed when you install Azure Kubernetes, which makes sense. PowerShell. That's why I can run this by doing F8 and stuff saving some stuff and YAML it's used for a lot of the Helm ch chart stuff so it's good to add it. So this is still running so I'm just going to do some video magic and fast forward to that point when it's done running. And so while running it, uh, when I run the create dev spaces, it's asking me the namespace where I want to do the development. Uh, in this one, I'm just going to create. And we're just going to use the default as a parent. And that's basically it. So now let's open. It's easier if you open it. I like opening them in different windows, even though I could do it here. So we're going to open a new folder, and we're going to open the front end. We're going to select it. And now uh, we're going to do Control-Shift-P. And I've 
used it recently, but if you start typing Azure Dev Spaces, prepare configuration files, it'll add the Docker files and all the stuff needed for um, for creating this. So let's click. And then it asks you if you want it to be publicly accessible. So if you say no, I'm, I'm going to do that for the back end. It just creates it when you deploy it, it creates like a local host URL that you can hit. It's pretty cool, even though it's not in your machine. If you say yes, it will create a URL that you could try it in different machines. For the front end, let's just try it out. So we have both. Um, so as you can see, it created the Docker file and it created a, basically a chart to, to, to deploy. So this gives you kind of like a easy way to create the Docker file, create one in develop and create one for uh, actual build and publish. So these ones you can modify, but it's a good kind of template to start. So now if we want to test it, we just go to debug. We make sure that we're in the Azure uh, dev spaces. You can also do it local if you want, but for this tutorial, we're going to do Azure dev spaces and then we can press S5 or press the little play button. And as you can see, it'll start, it'll do the chart and it'll, um, it's using the dev spaces and then it's going to build the image, uh, sorry, the Docker container. And I'm just going to fast forward, but basically it builds the container and then it'll deploy it into uh, Azure. So now we will it's debugging, but if you can see here, it says this is available at this uh, endpoint. So if we go here and we go to that endpoint, it works and it's in Azure. And even though it's in Azure, so I could put a breakpoint encounter, even if it's in Azure, I click it and I have the same debug basically if it's running locally. So it allows you to work in a smaller machine or with a bigger project and it allows you to use different services. So in the next video, actually, we're going to create a, the backend service and create a Kubernetes service for it and deploy it to Azure. So then the front end will be able to call it um, and we can start testing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Actually, I'm just going to finish so you guys see that it still works. So then counter equals one. Click me again. I get the breakpoint. It's one. And it comes to. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.